Hi everyone, I am Michelle Holabisky. I am part of the Next Up 6 cohort here in Edmonton, Alberta, and I'm here to interview Elizabeth Ballerman from the Health Sciences Association of Alberta. We are here to talk to Elizabeth about uh, what she's been talking about here at the conference. The first question, Elizabeth, that I have for you is, what is the main message you are here to give to participants here at the conference? that we really need to think big. We need to really need to think about uh, community, mm -hmm. that we need to think that community means all of us working together on uh, strong public services that benefit everyone, that what we do collectively, we can do far more collectively than we can uh, individually, and that, that that builds strong communities. Mm -hmm. We also talked about um, uh, fair taxation, for example, fair uh, revenue generation, the idea that we all need to pay our fair share of taxes, and that includes the very wealthy, that includes uh, corporations. Uh, so tax fairness is one of the big messages that I was hoping to bring forward. Absolutely. Now that we are moving into an election, we've just recently had our budget. You know, taxes are, I mean, they're always a topic yeah. of conversation, <coughs> but um, our Premier has, you know, introduced uh, new taxes, so mm -hmm. to speak, where do you think we need to move further in terms of taxation here in this province? What, how would you see it looking? Right. So the, what the Premier did with taxation was actually fairly uh, uh, weak, in, in my opinion. Uh, very, very slight graduation of income tax, you know, half a percent for those over $100,000 $100, uh, taxable income, mm -hmm. right? So that's not even total income. And graduating up, one of the most specious uh, pieces is, so he's increased an extra half percent for those who make more than $250,000, but that's only a temporary tax. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to go away in three years' time. Absolutely. So then there are the sin taxes that, that uh, we're talking about alcohol and, and cigarettes, etc. As a healthcare professional, of course, we want to discourage smoking and drinking, but the reality is that those taxes are going to be borne disproportionately by lower income workers and the middle class, and therefore, again, leaving the wealthiest off scot-free. The health care contribution levy, uh, again, from $50,000 to $130,000 taxable income. And that means that people in that middle class group are actually going to be paying a higher percentage towards our, our health care system at the same time as they're cutting actual funding to health care. It just makes me crazy. Right. Could you speak maybe a little bit to you as a health professional earlier? You spoke about the social determinants of health, right. and as a social worker, the social determinants of health were so, are actually relatively new to me, right. but have been incredibly eye-opening for me and my perspective on, as you've mentioned earlier, community building. Could you maybe speak to some of the social determinants of health? Right. So we spend a ton of money on health care to look after yes. people who are sick, but Study after study, uh, World Health Organization shows that the social determinants of health, which are things like, do you have housing? Do you have a job? Do you have uh, social connections? Uh, are you living in poverty? Uh, do you have childcare? Uh, and, and all of those various bases. Those actually have more to do with how healthy we are than the healthcare system itself. Now, some things you can't, you can't do anything about your genetics. You know, mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. choose your parents mm -hmm. well, then that's good. <laughs> but otherwise, get a good education, get a job, get uh, have housing. And the reality is that so many of the people who are already at the lower socioeconomic uh, level need assistance to get to that point of having housing, of having a good education, of being supported. Mm -hmm. we, we add more tuition fees and mm -hmm. we, we make it harder and harder uh, and have less and less supportive housing, for example. Child care for, for women and, and men who have child care responsibilities that, that they, where do you put the kid to go get your education to go to, go to work? Mm -hmm. Those are the, the, the areas where we've got problems. And if we start solving those, we are going to save money in spades on our healthcare system because they will be healthier throughout their lives. Absolutely. And I think it's good language to use, and it's understandable language, I have found, mm -hmm. using the social determinants of health yeah. to speak about health, not just in this very traditional medical sense, yeah. which you mentioned, yeah. that we, we, we put our blinders on, that's how we think about health, but how, how broad it is and the role that we, we all have which speaks to yep. you speaking about yep. community and yep. the connections that we have. There's a ton of money that is being spent on fixing things mm -hmm. when they get sick. Mm -hmm. Now, if we can get a, keep a senior in their home and keep them out of long-term care, for example, because now we, if we send somebody in to help them with cutting their grass, shoveling their walks, 
uh, the return on that investment is immeasurable. And over the years, we've actually cut back those kinds of supports. So people are probably getting into their long-term care facilities long before they need to, simply because those supports aren't there for their homes. We need appropriate long-term care for seniors so that when they do need that level of care, it's available for them, and they don't have to be sent hundreds of miles and kilometers away from their homes. Um, and all of those levels of care are much less expensive than having somebody wind up in the emergency department and then someone else who really, really needs to get there, there's not a bed for them because there are being uh, someone who doesn't need or want to be in that bed is in that bed because there's nobody else, no place else for them to go. Right. Thank you. The last question I'm going to ask you is, what should Albertans be doing to advocate for a just and fair Alberta? Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> Albertan, uh, Albertans do need to say to their government, uh, stop trying to fool us and stop trying to say that uh, that uh, we are poor. Talk to them about, talk to our politicians about appropriate uh, taxation so that everybody pays their fair share. Don't try to buy us off with a $10 tax saving that's going to make me spend $100 in extra fees and, mm. and services. Uh, what we do collectively is a huge um, uh, return on the investment, if, if you want to use that economic term, uh, you know, you get your money back in spades. Child care itself in, in Quebec, the child care system for every dollar that they spend, I think it's something like seven to ten dollars that they, that they get back in economic benefits because those parents have jobs. They then, they then actually pay income tax, contribute back to the community, and it's just a multiplier effect. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth Allermay.